Hello friends, Brother George here, and this is Monday, May the 18th, and I want to sincerely thank you for joining me. I want to share a devotion with you this, this afternoon. I want to talk about how to overcome your fear. I know a lot of people right now are dealing with fear and anxiety, and I want to take the scripture from John chapter 13. It says, this is the occasion when Jesus washed the disciples' feet. Before the Passover festival, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world to the Father. So Jesus knows that the time of his death is near. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Now by the time of supper, the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, Simon Iscariot's son, to betray him. Jesus knew that the Father had given everything into his hands and he had come from God and that he was going back to God. So he got up from supper, laid aside his robe, took a towel, tied it around himself. Next, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and to dry them with the towel tied around him. Now, everything about this story is extraordinary. It's a remarkable story, but one of the things that is that struck me today as I was reading it again was how this was on the eve of his betrayal, okay? Judas was about to betray him. He would be arrested. He would be uh, beaten severely. He would be tortured. He would be put to death in the most the most cruel, insane method imaginable. And Jesus knew that was going to happen. Yet in spite of that, he was able to go about his business that evening with such calmness. Think about it. When Jesus was washing the disciples' feet, do you think that his hands were shaking because of fear? He had a lot of things to say that night, a lot of teaching. Do you think that his voice was cracking with emotion and quivering? And yet, the disciples apparently noticed nothing different in his manner that evening. He went about everything he did with such calmness and such such strength and such dignity that no fear was uh, was visible, detectable at all. How is it that Jesus knew what was going to happen to him, and yet there was no fear? He was so calm. You know, there are some people who say if you want to overcome your fears, then you've got to face your fear. You need to just immerse yourself in the fear. For instance, if you have a fear of heights, then you just need to climb up on top of a, a, a tall building and just stay there until you overcome your fear. Well, you know, some fears, that's not going to work for us. For instance, for instance, instance I have a fear of sharks. Okay, I grew up in, in on on the Gulf. I I, I love the water. Uh, one of the things I love to do is is uh, to scuba dive. But I've always been terrified of sharks. Um, you know, if I'm in a boat and the shark is in the water, I got no problem with that. If I go to the aquarium aquarium and the shark is in the tank, doesn't bother me. But if I'm in the water and the shark is in the water, I am petrified of that, okay? So there are just some fears that immersing yourself in it, not going to do me any good, probably going to get me killed. There are other people who say that, you know, we just need to ignore our fears, just pretend like our fears are not there. But you know, fear is a God-given emotion that keeps us from doing stupid stuff. So ignoring our fears sometimes can put us in greater danger. Okay, so that's not a good practice. So how do we deal with our fear? I think one thing is that we live our lives in such a way there's nothing to be afraid of. You know, there are a lot of people who just live in fear of, of their past. They live in fear of getting caught. I remember when I was a senior in, a senior in high school, I took a bag of black cat firecrackers and put them up on the back of one of the toilets in the senior boys' bathroom at school and lit the fuse and took off running down the hall. About halfway down the hall, I heard what sounded like a war going on behind me. All of those black cat fireworks going off. I managed to make it into my homeroom and, and ran in the homeroom and ran and slid into my desk and sat there 
trying to look as innocent as I possibly could, when in just a few minutes, a voice comes over the speaker, the loudspeaker, it's Mr. Green, the assistant principal, and he says, there has been an incident on Senior Hallway, and I will find out who the culprit is, and if you are a senior, you will not graduate. I was afraid. Went to second period. Second period, Mr. Green comes over the speaker again. I am conducting an investigation. The noose is getting tighter. I will find out who you are. You will not graduate. How was I going to explain this to my parents? Third period, he comes over the speaker again. He says, I'm getting closer to finding out your identity and I will catch you before the day is over. I went to lunch. I was so I was so afraid. At lunch, I was sick. I couldn't even eat my food. By sixth period, I was just almost shaking, quivering. I, I, I just wanted to run away. Mr. Green comes over to the speaker again. I know who you are, and I'm coming to get you. And I was amazed. How could he not know who I was? By then, everybody in this school knew it was George Anderson who had done it. But somehow, I got through that day. Merciful heavens, Mr. Green never came and got me. I don't know if he was just doing that just to torture me. If, it, if that was what he was doing, it worked. I, listen, we used to have a saying, if you're scared, say you're scared. I wasn't scared. I was terrified the whole day. I was afraid I was going to get caught. And there's so many people out there who live in fear that they're going to get caught because of something they did. Well, Jesus had that, did not have that fear. He wasn't afraid because of something he had did because he had been living clean. We can live clean lives, and that will help to rescue us from a lot of our fears. But then there's something else. And listen to what it says here. It says, Jesus knew. Jesus knew. What does that mean? He knew something. And it was what he knew that kept fear from controlling him, that kept fear from just waging war against his heart. Jesus knew that the Father had given everything into his hands and he had come from God and he was going back to God. So many people live in fear of this virus of catching it. Well, you know, if you catch this virus, what's the worst thing that can happen to you? Well, I might get sick and I might die. And if you're a child of God, do you know where you're going? Jesus knew where he had come from, and he knew where he was going. He was assured of his destiny. He knew he was going to heaven. He knew he was going to be with his Father. Listen, so if you get sick and you die, you're a child of God. Where are you going? You're going to heaven. Listen, I'm not trying to encourage you to, to go there now. You know, take precautions, okay? But we, we don't need to live in fear, especially fear of death because death has been defeated Jesus defeated death at the empty tomb and so for the child of God Jesus said I'm the resurrection and the life he that believes in me what did he say will never die because you have eternal life death has lost a victim and that victim child of God is you so fear not and I hope this is this encourages you. I'll look forward to seeing you again. Until then, hey, be safe, but don't be afraid.